Can this new device treat your tinnitus? Today, I'm reviewing the Tenerity G1, a device that claims to provide tinnitus treatment with its own version of sound therapy. In this video, I'll explain how it works, where you can get it, and my final thoughts on if this can help you with your tinnitus. So first, what is the Tenerity product and how does it work? So the device consists of this little unit that uses a sticky patch to connect to the bone behind your ear. There's two of them, so you would use one behind each ear. You're supposed to use the devices and listen to the sound therapy coming from them for six to eight hours a day as it plays white noise. It does so through vibrations that occur through the skin and eventually vibrate the bones behind the ear rather than going through the ear canal with a traditional sound inside of the ear. This is called bone conduction and is the same technology and delivery method as those runner's headphones that leave the ear canals open but allow you to hear music or podcasts through them. In this case, the product would be used for tinnitus treatment with that piece behind your ear on something called the mastoid bone. Last June, the FDA gave the go-ahead for Tenerity to market its product in the US based on the idea that it was similar enough to other products that we know as safe. I had early access to the device, so I was able to put my hands on it and start to play around with it and ask myself, would my tinnitus patients use this? And if so, would it be successful in their tinnitus treatment? My initial intuitive response was, this won't work. When I was putting my hands on the device and imagining putting it on, taking it off, how it would look throughout the day, how it might change position based on certain activities, I just didn't see that it was any better than existing sound therapy solutions. There were only a few fringe cases where I thought, whoa, this device could actually do something. We're going to explore those in this video, but that was my initial reaction. We're gonna get into much more specifics on this because there are certain kinds of people that could benefit from this device. And generally, the theory of why this would work is something I believe in. Here are some other details on the Tenerity product. First, it seems pretty large. I know some of my patients are concerned about having a visible device on or near their ear. If that's not a concern for you, then this frankly might not matter, but it's certainly more noticeable than something like these sound therapy devices, which I see the most success with from my patients. But the real question, how is the Tenerity device supposed to help tinnitus? Well, it uses sound therapy treatment, which is the idea that you can treat your tinnitus with a consistent low level sound set just under the volume of your tinnitus used during the treatment period. And then after that treatment period is over, your tinnitus is reduced, the baseline level is, is improved, and you don't need the sound therapy anymore. Now, in my experience, sound therapy works. There's a lot of evidence supporting it, and it's something I use all the time for my patients who work with Tribal Health, the company that I started. We're available if you're ever considering getting help for tinnitus, we might just be the group that you've been looking for. Now back to Tenerity. So you can essentially get basic sound therapy through a speaker or a sound machine, but advanced sound therapy, which is commonly used in tinnitus treatment, is provided via sound therapy devices that go up and behind the ear with a thin wire and eventually a rubber tip inside of the ear canal. Now, here's what I would consider to be the gold standard sound therapy treatment. You can see on the screen, there are these devices, which we call sound therapy devices. Some folks also call them tinnitus maskers, although they're not completely covering or masking the tinnitus. But regardless, the features inside of these devices are what allow your brain to reduce tinnitus over time through sound therapy treatment by inducing this natural ability of your brain to reduce tinnitus. It's called habituation. So the sound therapy treatment is the driver for habituation, along with some other factors but the sound therapy being a very important one. Some of those sound therapy features in these devices can also be found in some types of hearing aids. Now, this is very different from say, bone conduction devices like Tenerity, but still, if you're getting high quality sound therapy, then Tenerity could be a valid and big part of your tinnitus treatment. You see, the brain isn't able to tell where is this sound enrichment necessarily coming from? Is this white noise, for example, that's coming from tenerity via bone conduction, is it processed as any better sound than say white noise coming from the sound therapy devices or say spending a weekend by a river where there's natural white noise? Well, to some degree, yes, and here's why. When you play sound through bone conduction, you're relying on all the frequencies, all the pitches to process through 
the skin and eventually the bone. Whereas sound coming through the ear canal, it has to process only through the eardrum. The skin that's behind the ear is much thicker and harder to pass high frequency sounds through than the eardrum itself, which is optimized for a wide range of frequencies to pass through it. So there is some high frequency information that's lost or attenuated, reduced by the time it enters the auditory system and the auditory brain with a bone conduction devices. So sound quality is perhaps marginally, but it is affected when you compare bone conduction to the sound therapy devices or devices that play sound through a small speaker inside of your ear canal. Now, does Tenerity work? The theory behind this product is pretty sound, but that doesn't tell the whole story. Before I talk about that though, if you have tinnitus, it's important to understand what your treatment options are. A great resource for you is the free tinnitus quiz. It will ask you a handful of questions and offer you personalized recommendations. I worked alongside a team of other top tinnitus doctors to create the tinnitus quiz, so I'd really recommend that you give it a shot. Head over to tinnitusquiz.com, you can see the link right here, or check below to try the tinnitus quiz for free. So back to Tenerity, how does it compare to other sound therapy options? First, I don't expect the bone conduction adhesive to work too well. We want something sustainable and easy to use, and from my experience, that adhesive piece frankly just won't hold the test of time. Now, I would love to be proven wrong on this because I'm always looking for my patients to have more sound therapy treatment options, but based on my experience, that's what I've seen. There was a similar hearing aid product that is a bone conduction hearing aid, which sits behind the ear. And I remember when it came out, I was hopeful, but as the years passed, I realized almost no one was using this. So even though the technology exists and theoretically it could be helpful, there's nothing like actual time in the market for doctors and patients to basically show us, hey, this isn't working or this isn't the best match for us. Other products are better. Other solutions that currently exist are better. And that's the general sense that I'm getting after putting my hands on Tenerity and giving some time. In a moment, I'm going to share some stories of real patients who have used it with our team at Treble Health because we are open to it. So generally, I don't see too much interest from professionals or patients, even though Tenerity is theoretically more visually appealing than um, a hearing device behind the ear. The sticky adhesive was relatively easy to use, but people just didn't really like this other hearing aid product. Doctors didn't re recommend it too often. And I would just from history see the same things happening with Tenerity. So I don't think Tenerity will do much for most people with tinnitus, but there might be specific cases where it could because it sits just outside of your ear, just like sound therapy devices. It definitely won't block your natural hearing, which is a good thing. And with sound therapy as part of your tinnitus treatment, we always wanna keep the ear canals open. Sound therapy devices have these small openings in the rubber tip that sits inside of the ear canal. So that keeps your ear canals open even though you have something in your ear. Now, selecting a medical device that doesn't block your ability to pick up natural ambient noise is key. It's kind of a beginner mistake that I see really often uh, where folks use headphones or AirPods, something that completely block their ears and they listen to some sounds on YouTube and they say, I've tried sound therapy. I did it for a few days. It didn't work for me. I still have tinnitus. And first of all, you're not even using the proper protocol for sound therapy with the type of device and keeping your ear canals open, you might not even be playing the right sounds or at the right volume. And additionally, you're not using it for long enough because you gave up too early. But that happens a lot. Don't fret, just learn what exactly you have to do. My team is surely available to help you if you wanted a customized sound therapy uh, recommendation. Other thoughts on Tenerity is that it's only for people with normal hearing. And what we find is that about 80% of our patients have some degree of changes to their hearing structure. So most people are coming to us saying, I have a tinnitus problem, not hearing loss problem. But when we look at the hearing test result, we tell them, look, I know tinnitus is your primary problem, but we need to address your hearing as part of your tinnitus treatment because that leads to a better outcome. And then the patients use the sound therapy devices with a little bit of what we call amplification inside of those devices which adjusts for a high pitch hearing loss, even a mild degree, and that leads to a better tinnitus treatment. So Tenerity being only sound therapy means it doesn't provide any of the beneficial effect of 
bringing in the hearing piece of it. So if you have a subtype cause of tinnitus called cochlear subtype, then the just sound therapy devices on their own wouldn't help you at all. So with our team, what we see is a lot of our patients, a lot of our doctors on tribal health are recommending devices that also have some of that amplification feature. We do not want to just avoid the hearing loss, all right? It's really important. Now, some of you have tried or are currently using bone conduction headphones for sound therapy via Bluetooth. Well, that's not a bad option. Uh, the Tenerity would be a step up from that. I don't like using Bluetooth devices for sound therapy because they have interruptions, notifications from your phone, advertisements. The battery life is often shorter with those kinds of devices. Whereas Tenerity, the battery life is longer. It won't be interrupted by Bluetooth. So just in terms of what's going to help your tinnitus more, I do see Tenerity as an improvement and a superior choice to just bone conduction headphones. The volume of the Tenerity device has a limited range of 10 decibels. In my experience treating my patients with tinnitus, that's loud enough for a lot of people because when we measure tinnitus compared to your hearing threshold, the tinnitus sound isn't actually that loud in terms of decibels. Just the comparative aspect of it makes it really hard for your brain to not concentrate on it. But especially if you have any degree of high pitch hearing loss, then we wanna be careful about choosing the right device. Tenerity might not be the right fit for you. In terms of what you're actually listening to through Tenerity, uh, it only offers white noise at this point in this current model that it's providing. In my experience helping patients with our telehealth program at Treble Health, I've seen plenty of people who don't respond that well to white noise, but do amazing when I program pink noise inside of their sound therapy devices, other natural water-based sounds, or even custom sounds like crickets, or if you're on our YouTube channel listening to our sound therapies, you know, search for silk or shimmer, those more custom sounds, none of those will be available through the Tenerity device, but with the sound therapy devices, you can access them. Additionally, we mainly use Widex devices. It's the best manufacturer for tinnitus medical devices, in my opinion. They provide the sound therapy devices. They also provide the hearing aids. And when we program that with their sound relax sounds that are only inside of those devices, wow, that really helps move the needle for a lot of our patients, get back to concentrating, uh, be in quiet places, reading on their couch, having a conversation with someone in a quiet place, all these important pieces, just a little bit of tweaking and adjusting to the sound therapy can make a huge difference. So the inability to customize the output, especially with, you know, without an audiologist making any custom changes and having sound therapy options, that's a huge downside for Tenerity. We'll see if the company will be around by the time they launch the next product, which probably will have Bluetooth and hopefully some other sound therapies inside of it. On the positive side, Tenerity is extremely simple. So if you don't like fussing around with apps or if you don't want to use your cell phone, then you can skip all of that with this new device. I have a patient who tried white noise, pink noise, and a lot of the standard sounds that are in devices that are programmed for tinnitus treatment. But when they started to use crickets, their quality of life and ability to concentrate in quiet places changed dramatically. One of our audiologists, she went through significantly bothersome tinnitus and she found that frog noises, which she worked with her audiologist to find, frog noises actually helped her the most. So it's not a one size fits all. And that's where I think the Tenerity device, they hurt themselves with that choice because customizing sound therapy is key right now in 2024 and beyond uh, with Tenerity or with any other device. So even if you do use the Tenerity device, the manufacturer recommends doing it as a part of tinnitus retraining therapy, what we call TRT for short. And that uses sound therapy and professional appointments with an audiologist for coaching and counseling. And I certainly agree that the gold standard of tinnitus treatment today is TRT. The founder of tinnitus retraining therapy is my direct mentor, Dr. Pavel Jastrzebov. And with the knowledge from studying with him, I created our comprehensive program at Treble Health. This kind of approach, whether it's with Treble Health or a very skilled audiologist in your local area, is the most comprehensive program available. I'll include a link below and a phone number to reach our team at Treble Health and our telehealth program. You can schedule a free consultation with an audiologist like me to see if TRT or Tenerity can help you in your specific case. It's also worth asking, what do the studies say about Tenerity? Unfortunately, not a lot. The company has done some very small pilot studies which have been presented at conferences but on their website, they don't link to any kind of peer-reviewed article. 
And I know that's expensive and they're a startup, so that's okay. But without good studies, the website alludes to other studies that have been done on white noise with sound therapy devices, tinnitus retraining therapy in general. And that's kind of confusing because the new mode that they're using to play the sound therapy hasn't been scrupulously studied the way I'd like it to be. It wouldn't be fair, for example, to say that the benefits my patients get with sound therapy devices is going to be the same as with other more basic forms of sound therapy like Tenarity or bone conduction headphones. Some other important things to know is that the Tenarity G1 does require a prescription from a professional, most commonly an audiologist. That means you can't just buy this online, you have to get it through a medical professional. There is the option to do telehealth. Our team at Treble Health has tried Tenarity with some of our patients because we're always recommending whatever technology or strategies help our patients the most and we're open to new solutions. We wanna try things out when our patients have certain situations that we think it could help them. With Tenarity, however, overall, we've had a bad experience. One of our patients wanted to try it because we thought it might help him sleep through the night. He had tried some sound machines, but they didn't work so well. So we tried Tenarity, and after getting launched and getting set up, the individual used the devices to try to help sleep at night with sound therapy from both sides not coming in through the ears. Could also be an option if um, the sleep headband or the sound machine just isn't working for you for some reason. Uh, this potentially is an option, therefore we tried it. But the Tenarity didn't stay in the correct position behind the ear. And for this individual, it turned out that using other tools like specific kinds of sound machines or the Treble Health sleep headband, those performed better. So if you're interested in this Tenarity product, I wouldn't get too excited that this is somehow going to drastically better the current gold standard sound therapy. It could be an improvement over using earbuds or bone conduction headphones for white noise sound therapy, but still, I don't even recommend those for proper tinnitus treatment anyways. Tenarity is an upgrade from bone conduction headphones. There's no doubt. But still, it's worse than our other sound therapy devices that we're currently having a lot of success with on our patients. If you're going to spend money on Tenarity, I think you should really make sure you've considered the gold standard TRT program with sound therapy devices first, preferably programmed by a specialist, an audiologist like myself, someone on our team, or someone very skilled that you vetted in your local area. To recap, Tenarity is a totally fine option for sound therapy treatment, but I know there's better ones out there. Look, I wanna make one thing clear. Tinnitus can get better, so be hopeful and commit yourself to the methods that work for a vast majority of my patients. If you can't get tinnitus out of your head and are having a hard time concentrating or trouble falling asleep at night, my team and I are here to help you right now. Just give us a call. Our phone number is on the screen. We'll answer your call immediately, or you can find the link below to schedule a time to speak with us that works for you. Since I founded Treble Health in 2020, we've helped over 5,000 patients who were told by other doctors that there was nothing they could do. The truth is there is something you can do for tinnitus, and it's my mission to make sure that you know that.